The first project that you will create in Tinkerta Tinkercad to turn in will be the CAD wrench. I've completed one here. I'll double click to open it here. And then I'm going to show you how to make it. So the wrench has basically three parts that you put together, but there's lots of steps in order to create those three parts. So looking at the wrench, you have a handle, you have a jaw that receives a nut, and then you have the ring that also receives a nut. These three pieces are then put together and you put your name on it. There are all of the, all these steps go together and you're going to be doing a lot of stuff with uh, grouping and alignment and changing the size of things. But basically it's just these three parts, the ring, the handle, and the jaw that we're going to put together in order to create this first project. So I need to start a new design or create a new design with this button right here. First thing you want to do is always make sure you're working in the correct units and I want to work in millimeters today. So first thing when my work plane opens up is there's a edit grid down here and that gives us our work units choice and I'm not going to work with inches I'm going to work with millimeters so that's good upgrade the grid. Uh, I'm going to give it a good name right here I'm going to call it my CAD wrench, enter, and I'm going to start with the handle. I'll move my beautiful picture out of the way, put it right up here in the middle, I suppose, least obstructive. I'm going to pull the cube onto the work plane. And if I click on the corners, I can change these dimensions. I want to make it 10 wide, hit enter, and 100 in length, or 100 long. Now, it's too tall, so I need to make sure that I can view the height. And that's this button here. I'll move it over so you can see that. See, it's 20 high. I need it to be 4. So just click and drag it down to 4 millimeters. And there's my handle. Now I can just set that aside. My handle is made. To make the jaw, I'm going to start out with a cylinder. Pull that onto my screen. I'm going to change the dimensions to 30 by 30. Enter. And change the height to 4. Okay, now I need to create a hole in here so it would fit around a wrench. So I'll just move that aside for now and I'm going to scroll down to the polygon, pull that onto my field, my work plane, and I need to change the dimensions on this. So I think if I stretch it, by grabbing a point like this point right here leave the 20 move that out to 40 good and I'm gonna pull in a hole a square hole and I'm gonna lop off this corner of it here you know this is too tall so I'm going to um, I can change it later in the height. So looking at the two of these, this is where it's going to cut off. And I can combine these two, select them both. Got a hole is going to be removing from the solid. Group them. And it lopped it off just right. Now I need to change the height. Grab the height, see it's 20. I'm going to bring that down to 4. Ah, I'm not either. I'm going to make it more than 4, like 8, because this is going to turn into a hole. So I'm going to change it to a hole right here. Now it's a hole, and I'm going to line the hole up with 
Come on. Line the hole up with. I want to let me select it. Okay. Um, I didn't. I don't like the edge here. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to move that also. It's nice and smooth. The more sides that I choose, the smoother it will be. Now I'm going to. Actually, I'm going to move this hole on top of here. And I'm going to get a view from the cube. So it's straight on. Select them both. I can either drag across them to select them both. Or I could use the shift key. I'm going to align them on this center line here. And then I'm going to group them. Now I have my jaw. So I can set my jaw aside with my handle. Come back and make the loop. <gasps> Not what I want to do. You make a mistake, command Z takes you back. All right. I have made the jaw and the handle, and now I need to make the ring and put my name on here. To make the ring, I am going to. I'm going to start out with pulling a polygon out here. And I'll zoom in a little bit here. A lot of bit. And I'm going to duplicate this. And I duplicate it with this button here. Just click on it. Click on it. There, I have two of them there. You can't see because they duplicate exactly in the same place. So this new one, I'm going to change a different color. Let's make it uh, yellow so we can see that it's noticeable. They are still in the same place. With it selected, I can rotate here. I'm going to rotate 30 degrees. So click on here, change it to 30 degrees. Enter. And you see how it has rotated around itself. I'll just go right to the top here and we can view that. That's perfect. I'm going to make this into a hole eventually. So I'm going to select both of them and group them. And I can make them into a hole right now. So with it selected, I can go and make it a hole. And that hole is just going to wait until I'm ready to use it. I need to make the ring. I'm going to make that out of a cylinder. I pull on here. And I'm going to change the dimensions of this to 25 by 25. So I click on the corner. 25. Enter. 25. Enter. And I'm going to select both of these, the hole and the solid. Remember, it's combining a hole and the solid. Ooh. I want to change the edges. See how rough that is? Again, I'm going to bring up the sides, make it nice and smooth. The more sides we have, the smoother it is. Now, select them both. I can click on one, hold my finger on the shift key, click on the second one. They are both selected. And then I'm going to align them on center alignments. And that is perfect. They are both selected yet, so I will group them. Grouping a hole and a solid creates a, creates a new design. All right, so we've got the ring. Now I need to combine them, put them all together. Oh, I didn't change the height of that. Remember to pull that down to four millimeters. Now to combine all three pieces, I need to have them overlap a little bit. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to bring this down. Make sure that they overlap. We don't want it to overlap into the inside of the circle on that one. Just a little bit over the edge. Okay, select them both. Combine them. We group them. Ah, undo. I did not align them. Select them both. Align them. Along this center line, uh -huh. and then group them. All right, now we're going to put the jaw on here or the open end of the wrench. And this piece, I want to rotate this also a little bit here. So I'm going to rotate yeah, 67.5 degrees, looks good to me. And overlap this a little bit. 
and then align them. Select them both, align them on the center, and group them. Now the wrench is complete. I just have to put my name on here. Find the text, pull it out onto the work plane, and in this box, then your name. Could be just the first name. You don't have to put your full name. You can change the font face if you like to have something a little different, maybe. Now, this is going to have to be sized. It's huge. I need to make it fit on my wrench. Uh, might as well spell my name correctly, too. It's not a capital A in there. Okay. Drag your name onto the wrench. Size it. Now this is tall too, so I'm going to have to change the height of it. And the height of the wrench was 4, so I'm going to bring this down to 5. Just so it's a little bit taller, so it'll be like it's embossed. Okay, it's not very well centered on here. So I select it. Oh, I can't get at it. There, I got it. All right. So if I scroll out, that looks pretty decent. Okay, now I'm going to group this. So I select all the pieces, group it, and then I can change the color of the wrench. I don't know of too many wrenches that are orange in color. If I wanted to, if I wanted to keep that multicolor look, I can click on it and click on the color, do multicolor. Okay, there's my finished product. So turn it in, go to this button up here where it says send to, right here, send to, click on it, and then download it. And this will download a picture to your Google Drive, and that is what you turn in. Don't turn in a link. Turn in a downloaded picture right here. And I've called it CAD Wrench, so that should be very easy for me to find. Put that into your sixth grade tech folder and turn it in on Schoology.